Hi folks, oh, busy morning for me, trying to upload a video and uh, do some work at the same time. Um, we have two brand new rear brake calipers and two OEM spec and some new outer brake pads from Unipart. Wow, when was the last time you saw some Unipart uh, pieces? I'm going to keep the box because you very rarely see stuff in them these days, but... All the parts are exactly the same. I mean, from these calipers and pads are used on Rover R8s, the old Hondas, all the way to the later MG ZR ZS's, 25s and 45s. So, uh, should be well applicable. So, I have set them up. You're supposed to rotate them. Um, I think it's anti clockwise and clockwise again to reset the system, which I have done. I've just done it a couple of times. And, uh, yep, hello, Andrew. Um, so, we're going to put these on today hopefully we can bleed the system and adjust the handbrake but we'll see how we get on okay first thing today we're going to take the handbrake out by taking the pin out the clevis pin take the handbrake uh, off we've got to release this clip here which might take some persuasion and then we'll um, take the back bolt for the brake hose off just pull this clip one turn, oh, don't come out, use you the way. Oh, that's stuck in, lovely. Another good stuck in clip. I think everything's going to be fighting me today. Doesn't want to come off. There we go. Out we come. So just get for that black screwdriver and then just pry the whole thing up. There we go, out it comes. That was the easy bit, the hard bit is going to get the clip off. As I say, that, that clip needs to be banged out. Not quite sure how you're supposed to move that out. I'll just bring you in here. This clip here is not budging. Now, to be honest with you, it's early on a Sunday and I don't want to annoy my neighbours. So, the simple fact is, we have got another option here. I will try and take it off at a later time. Might take it off later. But you've got two bolts here that hold this bracket on. Okay, it's attached to the caliper. The new one does come with this bracket, but I'm going to take these two bolts out and just release the handbrake that way. <clears throat> Sometimes you've got to be careful of the amount of noise you're making. <laughs> they are two 12 millimeter bolts. Just take it out. So we just pass we got in here. I know the caliper is slightly on. Oh, there we go. It does help if the caliper is not completely free. That was a lot easier. So all I've done is I've got a screwdriver and just literally just pried up and it's moved as you can see. So we're just gonna take it completely out, put a screwdriver through, flick it out, and then the hose will come straight out of the bracket. I think this is how they designed it to be done because there's no way you could do this with this attached to the actual caliper. So I'm just gonna pry this up. Uh, I can't do it on camera, but you get the, uh, you get the idea. Once this is off then, we can take this bolt out. Now that bolt, now that's out, I've had a bit of a wire brush around here. Use this cable, you put it around the hose clamp. Um, if I can find a good place to put it, in fact, what I'll do, yeah, I'll put it around where it goes around the unit. So if you, if you put it around the pipe, if you've got enough room, there we go, it's going through. Now, essentially what it does, is it clamps that together and this spongy thing at the end it's just a spring pressure there you go now that is clamped in that's crushed it now that hopefully will be enough to stop it but i haven't taken the cap off the reservoir because that will let gravity in and fluid will come out quite quickly uh, i have no means of catching it at the moment so i'm gonna have to sort that out anyway we'll take out the bottom the 
Braco's bolt and we're, we're in the uh, clear. Now, I'm just going to see if that 12mm bolt fits because I've got a feeling it doesn't. That was a good guess. I'll get the 13mm. So, what we do is release the back caliper. This might be a bit difficult because it's not completely secured. It's actually a 14. There we go, done. Right, that will start dripping fluid. Right. It's this side we want. Okay, brand new. It's got all the plugs to go on. So we've got the plug for the hose. Obviously got a new bleed nipple. That will be handy. The front ones I'm going to have to unseize by... I'm probably going to have to use the blowtorch because my experience of brake nipples is that they always seize. Uh, and penetrating fluid is just not good enough. You can actually round this by doing it very, very easily. Um, the piston is retracted. I have retracted them a little bit and they are literally like, if you can see the angle there, they're, they're sticking out a bit, but that's because I've had to re reset the mechanism. It says, turn it in and then turn it back out by half a turn to reset the handbrake ratchet. So, uh, yep. Okay, that's going to go on, and we've got a new bracket. Um, I've just got to clean this little clip, so I'm just going to give this a bit of a gentle wire brush because I think half the reason it is it's just got stuck because it's furred up and bonded after, well, I don't think it's ever been moved. There's no reason. And uh, I'll give the handbrake a bit of a clean up while we're around here. I will go over with the wire brush on this side as we're going along, but um, at the moment I just need to concentrate on the calipers. The problem is, particularly with myself, I don't trust myself. I do one job and then end up doing a million others because I spot other jobs to do. You've got to kind of have some focus. And I'm up against time. The only time I have to work on this car is the weekends at the moment. That's when I've got the light. Um, Otherwise, I'm working in the dark. It, one, that's not a very, that's not going to be a particularly great video. And secondly, um, I just hate the cold uh, and the dark. So, anyway, we're going to lift these out, uh, get the caliper off, and get the uh, the hardware off. So, I'm just going to take this bolt completely out. So, we just take these two slider bolts completely out. The bolts there, and. Just keep it nice and uh, just take this bolt straight out. I love the fact that these are banjo bolts and you don't have to get a spanner across like on Fords. I know I keep saying, you know, comparing Ford and Rover, but you know, these are two mainstream uh, car companies at the time. Yes, you know, Rover are a bit more upmarket, but not that much. There we go. Out it comes. Yeah, it's just a a banjo connection. That's so old school. It's like old um on the P6 I had um the oil pipes going from the bottom of the um oil pump to the top of the engine were exactly this type of pipe. Um and they always used to leak just a little bit. There was um there's always a bit of a leakage. Now ah there's a copper washer, there's a copper washer, there's a brand new one in the um in the brake caliper kit so I'll use that so clearly that's there for a reason um, but we're literally <laughs> literally that's uh, this is the the better side but I'm just going to take the hardware out if we can I'm just going to give it some persuasion uh, the idea of this clip is it actually tightens it gets more tighter with time as it goes on seriously there we go out it comes and that is in the scrap pile I'll just put that in the bin over there and there isn't a lot of fluid coming out and that is because I've literally stopped the connection all that fluid has actually come out via this little section up until where this is clamped right let's get the hardware back onto this interesting job and it goes on straight away no it doesn't in fact just had to recheck them because I think the gap there is a bit wider so the clip actually falls out quite easily but when it's on it should be fine so I'm just gonna leave that and if it drops out it drops out but I need to get this pipe back on now 
as a matter of priority before it leaks all over the driveway. So these, by the way, these bungs that come with calipers, they're very good for bunging brake pipe lines. They're the perfect size. So keep them, I'll just put that in my tin. I always keep them. I kept the ones when I did the front brake calipers on the Focus quite a long time ago now, it feels like it anyway. Um, yeah, we're just gonna put the line back on. It would help if I had actually the right bolt. I was putting a slider bolt in, I was a bit worried there. I thought, oh Christ, is the thread a different size? Yeah, make sure you get the right bolt in your hands, guys. And when I had the P6 a few years ago, that's all I did for the first few months. I had to change the front brake calipers, so fluid was dropped out there, and then the brake cylinder, then the servo was leaking that I had to sort out, so I had to do the system again. And then when I put it all back together, the brake servo decided it wanted to go the same way as the master cylinder and just start leaking. So um, I had non-stop brake fluid episodes throughout um, my time. I need to tighten that further when it's actually on the car. Um, but now, quite a bit of brake fluid in there. I suspect that clamp actually hasn't stopped it fully, but it slowed it down, that's the whole point. Now, I'm just gonna let that rest. Just there, <laughs> that will do. One thing I forgot to note, always put copper grease on the ears and then you can put it in. And also, on this one, the inside one, make sure that that dot, this indentation with my finger is, sorry, I'm trying to get it near the camera, that dot has to line up with the group, with the, um, the piston, the cross in the piston, whichever one it is. It just has to fit into the piston. And then you're done. Just have to slide it on. So these sliders are very keen. But uh, I'm just going to put some lube on the ears. Try and not get it on the actual brake pad. Down and then put it in there. And then obviously the next one. Just a bit of copper grease there. Okay, that's good enough for me. I might actually hold them in place this time. Or it might not. We'll see. Another fun bit. Getting this back over. Oh. It's all sitting nicely. The pin is located in the piston. The sliders good, look good. I think in the bottom one it looks a bit fat. I think I put a lot too much grease in there. But to be honest with you, that can't be a bad thing, surely, with sliders. Um, Strangely, the bottom bolt is a completely different size to the top one. I don't know why that is. Okay, that's good. That's the sliders working there, magic. And we are in. Now I'm just going to hook this back on, which will take two seconds. He says. Sometimes it's better to do it by hand, but it's got it's just gone in there. You need to get some long nose pliers and do that exactly. There we go, done. Yep, that's gone in. That's going to operate the handbrake really nicely. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, I'll actually show you now actually. So you can see a little bit more of what's inside here. Okay, I'll put the clevis pin in. There's free movement there, which is all good. This gator is a little bit split, so I'm going to put some silicon. Well, it's cracked, not split, but so the pin's in there. It's all cleaned up there, and um, this seems to be 
slightly on I'm gonna to have to persuade that to go in actually because that is actually not ideal yeah I'll do that in a second it's all sitting nicely there and there and the sliders are in there and bolted up there you see some of the excess grease but it's all good um, that's all bolted up and it's not leaking at all I'll just go over some brake cleaner but uh, I will nip that up now because I couldn't do it because the caliper was loose. And that is that for this side. So we'll just repeat on the other side. This side, I've just had to go around with a wire brush. But as I say, this side is ready for... Um, yeah, that's nice and ready, that is. I'll position those accordingly. I'll just take these bolts out. I think I'm going to speed this up. see how bad the seal has actually gone it's just the piston was seized pretty much and the seal has just gone like that it's absolutely useless now these lucas rear calipers i've always been known to do this look at that copper wash it's actually been crushed in and that's what i'm going to do with the new one and that bleed nipple no no chance not with about a bit of heat right in the bin in the bin of shame. The, the bin's broken as well. Remember what I said about jobs? Yeah, we'll just surface this down uh, just to prepare the surface for the wheel. Again, another reminder, make sure that the um, line, the square, is adjacent to this hole so that the pin on the back of the pad, on the rear pad, can engage just where my finger is on that side. Okay, I have put some um, silicon on these pads. I actually forgot to do on the other side, so I'm going to have to take that caliper off and do that properly. I completely forgot to put the silicon on the uh, pads, but I'm sure it won't matter if I don't, but... Uh, I want it done properly. Anyway, I'm going to shoot this on now very quickly. <laughs> and then we are ready to put the hose back on and if we just bolt like that and then the other copper washer on the other side and then we just put it on the hose just hooks into the caliper through a little um, pathway so once again it's covered in brake fluid there we go done and that's it that's all sorted i've cleaned the disc up that's all fitted pads are fitted just gotta tighten these two sliders put the handbrake back on put the bolt tighten the bolt and we're done and take the hose clamp off and that is this side done all done all fitted that's nicely on hoses on sliders on handbrakes on everything's adjusted everything's off and it is ready to be depressed now the stage is you've got to depress the foot pedal several times now i am aware come to the front of the car the fluid is quite low i'm going to top that up before we start but we're just going to depress the foot pedal a few times 
careful not to spill this because this is quite toxic. I'm just going to fill it up very generously. Stop right there. You see the colour, that fluid? It's almost transparent. What's down there is very different. Right, we're going to depress the pedal to set the pistons out. Hopefully, we we'll hear a good noise. Right, time to set the pistons all the way out by depressing the foot pedal. So just do it. It's got air in it, it's gone all the way down. Yep, I heard a click. I don't think you'll catch that on camera, but I definitely heard some click from the pistons. That's gone hard now. Oh, that's gone hard. That's really firm, considering that there will be air near the calipers. I mean, I can feel it slightly. Anyway, that's enough of that. It's a test. Oh yeah, that's on. I can barely uh, move that. Yeah, the uh, sliders have both moved out. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Brilliant. Let me check the other side. Now the front sliders would have also acted, so we'll check them when we get the front wheels off. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same way. They've moved out, moved out. Lovely, I've just got to remove the excess grease, but yeah. Right, now, handbrake. Now the procedure with the handbrake, I mean, what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna get in and adjust the nut because obviously all this has changed I'm going to adjust the handbrake properly right to access the handbrake adjustment all you need to do flip the ashtray out and pull should there you go now can you see what we've got is um we've got a nut to adjust the handbrake up there yeah so we're going to wind that and slacken it all the way out and then the procedure by the book is you have to click the handbrake up by one click and then you see if the wheels are starting to drag if they're not you have to tighten it up to the point where they're just starting to drag on one and click number one on the ratchet okay so we're just going to back it off and start from the beginning sometimes you don't have to mess with it but we've changed the calipers that set it up properly now, what I've found, I can't really take the old cluster out. We're taking these screws out. I've actually taken the surround out. It's actually come out. Now, I reckon I can get a spanner at an angle. I think it's a 10 mil spanner at an angle going in to slacken that off. So we'll do that now. It is, in fact, a 12 mil spanner. Way off. There you go. Just keep doing this until it's slackened all the way off, okay, to the point where you're happy. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but that is now slackened all the way off to the point where I don't even need a spanner, I can do it with my fingers. So now, the procedure is to put the back wheels back on, um, and then basically click, what we will do is we'll click the handbrake on. That's it, that's on one. Now we're going to see how the wheels turn and start adjusting this clockwise back in until we feel a slight drag. And that's what the manual says. And as typical, it starts to rain, but that's not gonna stop me. All right, the wheel is back on. I'm supposed to do is two wheels to make sure they're both even. I mean, to be foot fair, I think the handbrake cable works quite nicely on both sides. Now, all I can hear is the disc pad shrub. There is no drag that I can feel on that. So we go in and we adjust it in. Right, you may have to do what I've done with, um... oh dear, get on. I've had to take out one of the bolts of the actual bracket mechanism, just the front one, there's two bolts. Take out the first one, put a short 10 mil on, a universal joint, to a quarter inch ratchet and I'm now able to adjust that cable in. Spanner won't even touch it, it's too tight. 
Now I'm just going to take my socket back and my nut back out and we're going to see what happens at the wheel side. So, oh God, the socket's stuck on there, lovely. All right, I'll get that off in a second. Now, I've banked it off literally half a turn and... Mm, I think we need to go a quarter on, meet halfway. Now, literally, it's just going to be a quarter of a turn. So if we just do this, that's it. Right, now let's check. This is how incremental it has to be until you get it right. Let's try just a fraction more. I think it hasn't caught just yet. Okay. That was another turn. And here we go again. Mm. Let's try again, just a little bit more. Let's keep doing this until it actually comes off. Now I can feel it dragging. Yeah. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to back it off just a little bit, just a touch. Huh, I got stuck in the car because the child locks were on that door. Luckily, all the other doors were open, so if we just back it off. See, that actually feels pretty feel. You have to... You have to really feel it. Now, look how far out that was. Now, if you look at the original video, if you go a few minutes back, have a look at how far in it was. It was much more than this. So clearly people have been trying to adjust it up when really the calipers are not working. And it's exactly what I was saying about the drum brakes on these focuses. Same for disc brakes. You've got to make sure that the wheel cylinders or the calipers are effectively positioned, right? They, ooh, what the hell is that? It's got paint over that. It's gonna need a thorough clean this. Um, but you've gotta make sure that the wheel cinders and the calipers are well positioned, okay? That they're working and that they are actually where they should be. Because if they're not, then the handbrake is not gonna be effective no matter how much you adjust it. All that does is it tightens the cable that's it. It tightens the cable. And if the handbrake is well adjusted at the rear calipers, if the calipers are working, then like what's happening just now is the calipers will start to work with the handbrake. If the calipers, for whatever reason, are seized or the, the wheel cylinders are not adjusted out to the shoes on drum brake models, they're not going to be effective because the handbrake is effectively going to be tight, but the wheel's still going to be pretty loose. And what you're doing is you're asking the handbrake, can you just go much more tighter and stretch yourself so that the brakes actually come on? That's not going to work. It never works. You've always got to make sure the brakes are correct at the wheel. That is adjusted. We're going to put it all back together. I'm just going to check the other wheel just in case. Um, and then um, we can start bleeding the car, which will be interesting. Squeaky bum time. You're a United supporter, right? God, that brake pedal is out. I just want to make sure the brake, yeah, brake pedal pump that a few times. Okay, here we go. Four, right, let's take it off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That feels tight. I mean, I can't even go to eight. Right, let's just, right, eight feels. Good. <clears throat> well, that's moved, and um, I can't move the wheel. But the test will be on this side. Oh, God, I can't move that wheel. Right, that's good. Now, I'm just... For curiosity, and I've done this before when I've done handbrakes, 
how low does it go? Well, I've put it on four now. Oh, I can barely move that. Right. Yeah. Two. Because I've backed it off. Oh, there we go. For it, that's number two. Right, that's number two. Sorry, I don't know why I keep going round. Right. Oh, not again. One, two, three. Right, three. Yeah, it's catching. And it's stopping very quickly. Number four. That's quite tight. Number five. Oh, God, I can barely move it. And number six is definitely can't move it. One. Look at that. Free as a, free as a bee. And if it's off, I'm going to back that adjuster off just a just a fraction because it's supposed to catch between six and eight clicks I am going to back it off a fraction and we are done that is how you set the handbrake up just take your time do what I've done just click it up one at a time now on rovers it's six to eight on Fords it's four that, that, sh that handbrake should be good after four clicks of that handbrake. A lot less. So it's different per model, okay? But same procedure, spin the wheels. Just click the handbrake up one at a time and see how it is. But in general, I think by five it's pretty much stopped. By six it's absolutely solid. On this wheel, I'm hoping that the other wheel is operating exactly the same. We will confirm that, but I am just going to back off the adjuster just a fraction as I think it's just a fraction too tight and you can have too tight a handbrake next step bleed the brakes now the manual says that you start with the passenger front and then you come here and there and there that's wrong in my opinion I've always Replace the fluid furthest away from the master cylinder working back. So this side, that side, drivers, and then finishing uh, passengers, then finishing off with the driver's side. So that's what we're going to do. All we need to do is crack this nipper off. It shouldn't be any problem because they're brand new. Just take the, um, the rubber bung off, and I think it's a 10 uh, mil bleed, and we'll start bleeding with the bleed kit. This is a one-man kit, easy busy bleed, and it's never failed on me. Some people say these are pretty rubbish, but I've never had a problem. The idea is that there's a valve uh, inside. Uh, where's the valve? There's a valve inside there or somewhere, I think. It could be in there. And the one-way valve stops air coming back. It just goes one way. So we're going to do that progressively. So I'll see if we can get it cracked. Now all you do with this busy bleed kit is you put the loop that this bung through probably the big hole. You know, I never, I've never used the small ones there for mini nipples. I don't know what they're for. Um, uh, sounded quite wrong there saying mini nipples. Um, you don't need fluid in this as well. So you just literally make sure there's enough fluid at the end. So you, I've just put it on the nipple. Push this fitting over, it's quite tight. The idea is that it doesn't come out under pressure. I have to do that off camera. Yeah, so it won't go over. So put that over and then you can start pumping the brakes now the only thing with this is make sure that you've got a 10 mil spanner free I've just put it on without putting the spanner on I'm going to use a ring spanner the, the proper one why is that in there use the proper one put it on then put this on so I've got to take that back off like more crack it off just a little bit that's it and then we go and pump the brakes 
Oh, it's terrible weather. Now I've left the cap off. Don't want rain getting in the braking system, but I've just leave the cap off and keep an eye on that level. So let's get in the car, ignoring the rain, and we pump away. I might actually leave the camera where it is uh, so you can see. There we go. That should expel fluid. Let's come and have a look. And what do we find? There's some fluid in there. And there's not a lot of air, but it's dirty fluid, so we're gonna continue. I am literally just gonna whip that just to the side and then we'll keep pumping the brakes. I wanna get more of that out of the system. Oh, but we're not finished, are we? Because if we need to do a proper job, we've got to get the fluid out of them front pipes. So we've got to do the front brakes. Now that could resolve in um, this why I'm wearing these glasses. We might have to get the gas out because my experience of bleed nipples is not good. And WD-40, even plus gas, may not cut it. We'll see how soft those um, brake nipples are. So, nipple off and penetrating fluid. Okay. Right, that socket is now on. It's a... Tw it's a 11, persuasion, gentle. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Just gentle taps. That's enough for me. Okay, so we can just crack that off. And bleed the brakes. Right, we are all done. That was cracked off. That was absolutely fine as well. Now, that's how much fluid I took out the entire system. That was a full bleed, by the way. Probably would have been about half that if you'd have just done a bleed, but I flushed it and it needed it. That's terrible. Look at that color. And look at that. It's almost transparent. It's almost see-through, but it is there. And it's come right up to the top. I'm going to put that back on. Actually, I'm going to clean around this cap. Ooh. Um, yeah, we are now done today. So we've done a lot of work. The calipers are on all handbrake adjusted, bleeding. Uh, it's all starting to come together now. And hopefully, uh, well, the time from this video in a week, we will be able to start that car and go forwards and backwards because we will have brakes. I'll see you soon, guys. Take care.